In this video, I'll be reviewing Decal Beast, which is a great Blender add-on for adding decals to your objects. Now this add-on was created by Bala, who is the same add-on creator as the Cut and Wrap add-on. So that's another add-on which I recently created a review on, link is in the description if you want to check it out. But he also made another add-on specifically for decals. So thank you so much for letting me try out this add-on. And if you're interested in learning more about the add-on, then you can check out my affiliate link in the description and purchase on the Superhive Market. And if you purchase using my affiliate link, then I'll earn a small commission, but I only recommend content to my audience, which I really stand behind. Now there are a few different versions of the add-on, but I'm going to be using the full version of the add-on. So here in Blender, I just have this simple cube here and it has a plaster material. And what's so cool about the add-on is that you can just add the decal onto any object, even if it has a material already. So to install the add-on, you can just download the add-on and then take the zip file and you can just drag and drop it into Blender and then just click on OK to install the add-on. And then if you want the add-on to always be turned on in your default preferences, you can click on edit and you can go to the preferences and you can go to the add-ons tab and then search for the decal beast and then just make sure it's checkmarked and then you can click on the save preferences button. Now if you press the N key to open up the side panel, you can scroll right down here and here it is, you can see it's called decal beast. So it's the decal beast tab. So I'm going to open up the first tab here, the decal tab. Now what's so cool about this add-on is it already comes with some built-in decals. So you can see here there's like the .config folder, Blender, the Blender version, and then scripts and add-ons. So where the add-on is installed, it's already out of the decals there. And so it's selected the folder where the decals are. So what I'm going to do is click on load and it's going to load up the decals. So there are some different categories which are built into the add-on. So you can see there's these little scribbles here. So I can click on the category here and choose this one. And then if I click on the decals, there's a bunch of different decals. So these are things you could maybe add to like a city wall or a street wall or something kind of looks like some graffiti or things like that and then also if I click here to open up the categories again I could choose this other category and so this has like some cool kind of backgrounds and things some like explosions and things like that but what you can also do is add in your own decals so what I'm going to do is click on this file icon next to folder then what I'm going to do is locate to this folder on my computer called decals and so I've created some folders within the decal folder so I have a cardboard box, caution, construction, and explode. So I'm not going to go into any of these folders. I'm just going to click on accept. And then what I'm going to do is click on the load button. You can also click on the refresh button. And so you can see here are all those different folders. And so I can go into each one of these folders. So there's like the explode folder. And then if I click here, I can choose between these. So these are the different folders that I had. And then these are the different decals within those folders. So it's very useful if you already have folders, which are set up with lots of decals. For the categories here, I might go to the explosion one and most of these decals I've just downloaded from Pixabay. So I'm just going to add this one right here. So now what I can do is just click on add decal and I can just move my mouse over the object and it's going to snap to the object and I'll just click to place it there. But when you click you can now rotate the decal and then what you can do is scroll your mouse with it'll change the size of the decal. So it's a really quick way to just easily place the decal. So I'll just rotate it. So I'll just rotate the decal like that and then click there to place it. So once you add the decal, there's an empty here. So I can move the empty to move the decal. But what you can also do instead is use the slide empty button. So if you want to move the decal around after you placed it, you can click on slide empty and then you can just drag the decal around and put it somewhere else on your object. Another way to re-add the decal is to click on the select all empties and then click on delete selected so it'll delete the decals and then you can go somewhere else so move somewhere else click on add decal and I could for example drop it here and then I could use my scroll wheel make it smaller and then click right there and I can add multiple decals if I want to so I could stick one there click there and then I could click here to add another one let's maybe add like this one here add decal and I could put this one on top so I'll stick it there and then once you click once then you can scroll your mouse wheel to change the size of it and rotate it and then click there a second time. Now right up here on the decal type there is customizable, simple, and too simple. So the customizable one is the one that I'm going to use because it actually adds some more customizable settings so you can do some things like change the colors. But if you're adding a lot of decals you could change it to simple or too simple and that will allow you to add more and more decals without it getting too laggy or crashing but you aren't going to have quite as many of the custom features. I'm going to leave it as customizable in this video. Now if you select the object you can also see right over here if you open up the shader editor you can see here's what the add-on is 
is doing. So it's kind of creating these node groups and then it's adding it into the base color. If I just drag the node group right over here, you can see it's plugging it into the base color. So if you were wondering kind of how it's adding the decals, I do like to kind of see what it's doing. So this is what it's doing in the shader editor, but you really don't even need to use the shader editor once you've set up the base material. So I wanna add another decal. So I'll open up the categories here. I'm gonna to go to this one here. Let's click on these and I'm just gonna add like this one and I'll add another decal. And then I will click there and then scroll down and click there. So you can see the decals are nicely layering on top of each other. So if you scroll down here, there's decal layering. So with the empty selected, you could, for example, move this back and I can see it on the very back or bring it forward. So that's a really easy way to move the layering of each decal. And then of course you can also slide the empty. And then if you want to delete all the decals, you could click on select all empties and then you can click on the delete selected and it would delete all those decals. Let's scroll down here to the batch styling. So I'm gonna open a batch styling. And so this is a way that you can customize the look of the decal. So I'm just gonna like select this decal here. So I'm gonna select the empty. And then what I can do is click on like change color. So you can see now it's gotten rid of the main color and it's using some other colors. So I could maybe change the colors, maybe do like a bright blue or something. And then maybe I'll do like a white White color and then there's also some really cool aging so I can drag up the aging and it's gonna look like the decals kind of worn away so you could use the aging to make the decal look really worn for example if you're like making some graffiti on maybe like a building in a city or something like that so there's a bunch of different settings like the detail there's also like the grunge scale and also the roughness value and then the aging and then also the decal roughness now, if you want these settings to be applied to all the other decals, what you could do is click on select all empties, and then you could hold down the shift key and select this empty last. And you can see the batch styling is already checked. So just make sure it's checked, but it should be on default. And then what I can do is click on apply to selected. And you can see it's gonna add the same settings to all those decals. So that is very useful. Now there's also a cool animation feature. So what I'm gonna do is move this decal right over here and then let's go to the batch styling. So what I'm gonna do is just hover my mouse over these values and hit the backspace and that's gonna reset the values. Let's also turn off the change color. So let's now open up the animation tab. So basically what I can do is I can animate these values. So I'll just leave the settings at the default and I'm going to click on capture defaults. So this is going to capture all of these default settings. So now what I can do is change the duration of frames. So for example, I could change this to 100 and then what I could do is change the settings. So maybe I'll just turn up the aging. So we're basically going to animate the aging. Let's go like that. Maybe turn down the roughness, turn up the grunge scale. And now I'm going to click on the animate button. So now if I just open up the timeline here and just go to the starting and just play this, you can see it's gonna actually animate those values that we created. So that's pretty cool. Now there's also a really cool text feature so you can add text decals. And so this would be really cool for maybe creating something like graffiti on a city wall. So what I'm gonna do is scroll up here. I'm gonna click on select all empties and then delete selected just so we can start fresh. So I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna open up the text graffiti. So just like with the other decals, the add-on also has its own text decals. So it already has the folder set up so you can click on load styles. And then if you click here on styles, you can see there's a bunch of cool fonts here. Now I think this font is really cool, kind of the orange glowing font. So I'm going to use this font right here. And then there's some lines. So I could type in Blender and then I could click here on add line and then I could type in tutorial. And then also just to show you the spacing here, I'm going to type in tut, so like Blender tut for tutorial. And then what I can do is click on drag text. So I'm just going to drag right over here and then I can again drag it once I click once, then I can rotate the text and I can use my scroll wheel to change the size of it. And I'll just click right there. So now it says Blender tutorial. So let's just scroll down here. So there's a few different settings. So there's like the letter spacing. So I'm just gonna turn this way down because it is a bit big and I'll click on update spacing and that's gonna look a lot better. All right, that's pretty good. I will make it a little bit smaller and then I can update the spacing. All right, so that's pretty cool. And then there's also the word spacing. So if I just wanted to turn up the word spacing and then update the spacing, there's gonna be an extra space there in between the words. So you can see now that's updated. There's a bit of an extra space there, but what I'm gonna do is get rid of this. I just wanted to show you for an example. Now, if you do wanna edit the text, you can just click on update spacing and it's gonna actually update the text. So I'll just click on update spacing and now it's updated that. And then there's also the line spacing. So if you want there to be more space in between the lines, you can turn up the line spacing and then click on update text. And now you can see there's a bit more of a space there. And then if you scroll up here to the top, you can also use the batch styling. So for example, I could change the color if I want to make this maybe like blue text 
with maybe like a green outline or something like that. I'll just turn that off though. And you can also turn up the aging just like we've done before. So you can make the text look like it's faded away. So that's really useful. So the last feature of the add-on, which is really cool, is you can actually bake this to a color map. So if you add lots and lots of decals, it might start to get kind of laggy because it's layering lots and lots of decals on top. And also you might want to bake it to a color map once you've like finished the 3D model so you don't have to keep having all these decals and have the empties. So you can just bake the decal to a map when you're finished. Finished. So you can open up the baking settings and I pretty much leave all the baking settings at the default. They work really well on default. So there's the samples. I'll just leave that at 10. You can also choose the resolution. I'll just go with 4k so it's high quality. The UV margin I'll just leave at the default. There's also like the merge distance so you can really play around with the settings but I find that just leaving it at the default is fine. And then I am going to keep these so the remove graffiti layers so it gets rid of those graffiti layers and also removes the empties because we don't want those empties once we baked it. So I'm just going to keep those on and then I'm going to just make sure I select this object because that's the object that we want to bake and I'm going to click on the batch separate bake join. So I'll click on that button. Now it's going to ask you for a UV map method. So how do you want to UV unwrap the object for it to bake? And I'm just going to use the smart UV project because that'll just create a new UV map and unwrap it pretty well. So I'm just going to click on OK and we'll wait for this to finish. And it has now finished. So now it's actually baked it to an image texture, but it looks exactly the same. So if I just open up the shading workspace, let's just pull this over here. Just drag this over here so you can see the add-on just created a new UV map. So it's smart UV projected it and it added this new color here and then it just replaced it for the base color. But I still have the old image texture here, the plaster, if I wanted to go back to it. So that's so useful. So then to save this image, what I could do is just click here, drag down, split the window, and I could change the editor type to the image editor. So here is the baked image texture. So if I just scroll out, you can see here it is. So I can click on image and just save as and just save that image texture. So that is Decal Beast, a really great Blender add-on for adding decals to your objects. So I can highly recommend this add-on, it works really well. So if you'd like to learn more about the add-on or purchase the add-on, then you can use my affiliate link in the description on the Super Hive Market, and if you do purchase the add-on through my affiliate link, then I'll earn a small commission. But I only recommend content to my audience, which I really stand behind. So that's going to be it for this video, thank you for watching, and if you'd like to check out the other add-on review video that I have for Cut and Wrap, which was created by the same add-on creator, I'll also have a link to that in the description. But that'll wrap up this video, so thank you for watching.